Hi everybody, Mr. Garrett here, and I wanted to make this video to show you some of the methods that you should be using to solve or prove your trigonometric identities um, in the in the packet that I gave you and the worksheets I've given you. Um, there's a couple things that keep coming up, and these are some methods that you should maybe put in like your little trig identity method toolbox, and uh, hopefully that'll help you out. I'm also going to help you get through uh, three or four of the different problems that are on that second worksheet so hopefully you can uh, follow along and be able to finish them up. So as we are looking at the different possibilities or the different things that we need to look at, number one thing that I told you to do is always, always, always change tangent, cotangent, secant, cosecant to sines and cosines. Um, one of the things that I have seen one of the things I've seen is that people that see uh, cotangent of x. They write it as 1 over tangent of x. And that's okay if there's a tangent there or a cotangent or something like that. But typically what we want to write cotangent as is cosine of x over sine of x. And so one of the things that I tell you to do is to always change your tangents, cotangents, secants, and cosecants into sines and cosines. And then that way we can work with some of the Pythagorean identities and so on and so forth. The other thing that we need to do is we need to be able to add and subtract fractions, which means we need to get common denominators. I know some of you aren't very good at adding or subtracting fractions, but we need to improve upon that, and that's something that we'll work with as well. The other thing that we need to do is understand how we multiply fractions. No, we don't cross multiply. Um, we multiply the tops by the tops and the bottoms by the bottoms. We can also cancel things out as long as it's in factored form and we're not as long as things are in fa factored form and we're not worried about um, you know addition or subtraction or things like that. The other thing that we can do is we need to know how to divide fractions. Sometimes we get into compound fractions where we have like A over B over C over D and if we see A over B all over C over D what I do is I remember A over B divided by C over D is like A over B times D over C. So I could rewrite this as A over B times D over C. I flip the bottom or gotten the reciprocal of that and I take that right there and then I can cancel out or then multiply from there. The other um, couple methods that we may come across, in fact there's a couple problems that we do this, is if everything's in sine but then there's like a cosine squared there we want to change that cosine squared to 1 minus sine squared or vice versa if everything's in cosines and cosine squareds and then we see a sine squared change the sine squared to 1 minus cosine squared that way everything's in sines and cosines and we can work with like terms and then the last thing is obviously you need to be able to factor and expand factoring does us a lot of good because we can then cancel things out. Expanding then helps us when we need to check things out or sometimes get to some different looking um, identities. So we're going to work through I think four different examples here. Um, the first one is the number one on your worksheet and it has tangent of y plus cotangent of y times sine of y times cosine of y and that's supposed to equal one. And you're like wow that's a lot of stuff to equal one. Well let's look at our first step. Our first step or our first method is to change so the first thing that we're going to do, our first method, is to change tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant to sines and cosines. So right here we have tangent. So I'm going to write that as sine of y over cosine of y. And I'm going to write cotangent as cosine of y over sine of y. And that's my first step. And I already have sine of y here and cosine of y. Now I'm writing those over 1 so I can tell that they're in the numerator so that when I multiply I know what's in the numerator and what's in the denominator. Once I get to this point, now what I have is I have a situation where I need to be able to add and subtract fractions. I have a denominator of cosine, a denominator of sine, and so I need to get common denominators. Common denominators between 1 third and 1 half. I figure that out by saying 3 times 2 is 6. So I get those common denominators by multiplying my 2 over 2 because that's like 1 it gives me 2 sixth multiply the 1 half by 3 over 3 that gives me 3 sixth and then I simply add the numerators and keep the denominator and I get 5 sixths as my answer I want to do the same thing right here 
I'm going to multiply this by sine over sine because my common denominator is going to be sine cosine. I'm going to multiply here by cosine over cosine because again my common denominator is going to be sine cosine. So I have sine squared over sine y cosine y plus cosine squared over sine y cosine y. And then out here I still have the sine y times cosine y all over 1. When I have common denominators, now what I can do is I can go ahead and <clears throat> add the numerators. So the numerators are going to be sine squared y plus cosine squared y. Oh, that's ringing a bell because that's the granddaddy formula, the Pythagorean identity. So that's sine y cosine y in the denominator. And then I still have sine y cosine y outside. Now when I see this granddaddy formula I'm just going to go ahead and put 1 there because sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 by our Pythagorean identity. That gives me 1 over sine y cosine y times sine y cosine y over 1. And so I've added because of common denominators. And then the last step is number 3 up here. When I go ahead and take a look at that, multiply fractions by top by the top and bottom by the bottom. We did some multiplying here, but I also can cancel. When something's on the top and something's on the bottom, I can cancel things out. So I'm going to get my red pen here, and I'm going to say, oh, well, here's sine y cosine y. Here's sine y cosine y. Now everything is canceled. I have 1 on the top, 1 on the bottom. That's equal to 1. And that's what I had on the right side the entire time anyways. And so now I've proven that tangent y plus cotangent y times sine y cosine y is equal to 1. And I've used three of my six methods in my methods toolbox. Let's take a look at this problem here. This problem is when we're dividing fractions and you can see this is from number five on our worksheet and in number five <clears throat> you should be able to use sines and cosines and adding and so on and so on to get to this point but now I have sine squared v over cosine v all over sine v plus co sine v cosine v over cosine v it just sounds like a mouthful so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the numerator sine squared v over cosine v and I'm going to write times, and I'm going to take the reciprocal of this denominator. So that means the cosine v goes on top, and the sine v plus sine v cosine v goes on the bottom. And when I see this, now what I can do is I can cancel out my cosines. All right, giving me sine squared v on top and sine v plus sine v cosine v. Now just a little heads up, probably going to want to factor out this sine v so you get sine v times 1 plus cosine v, um, but that's for another stop. Uh, same thing over here, let's just you know show how we can do that again. If I take the numerator, sine v minus sine v cosine v over cosine v and then take the reciprocal of this denominator cosine v goes on top sine squared v goes on the bottom and I just cancel out my cosines giving me sine v minus sine v cosine v all over sine squared v. And so you can see again there's a sine common in both of those and so I probably factor that out but that's another um, example. 
If I want to get rid of or get everything in terms of sine or everything in terms of cosine, this is a good example. This is a number two. And if you look, I have cosine to the fourth power over here. And I've even had some of you say, is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. And over here on the right, you have cosine squared minus cosine squared times sine squared. Well, I see one thing that's a little bit different on top than the others. Over here, we just have all cosines. Here we have all cosines and then this sine squared. Well, looking at our Pythagorean identities, I know that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. And so what I want to do is I want to replace that. So right here, I'm going to say cosine squared theta minus cosine squared theta times, now instead of sine squared, I'm going to put 1 minus cosine squared theta. And that's still all over sine squared theta. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dif distribute that cosine squared, and I'll have cosine squared theta minus cosine squared theta plus cosine to the fourth theta all over sine squared theta. Simplify and you'll end up with the correct answer. And then the last one is number seven. In number seven we got this sine to the fourth x minus cosine to the fourth x over sine squared x, cosine squared x, and then sine squared minus cosine squared, sine squared, cosine squared, and so on and so forth. Lots of squares, lots of cosine, so on and so forth. But the factoring and expanding that I'm talking about is difference of perfect squares. And if you think about difference of perfect squares, that also breaks up into a plus b, a minus b. If you had perfect force, a to the fourth minus b to the fourth, that's like special perfect squares, that becomes a squared plus b squared and a squared minus b squared. And so right here, when I see this, I say, hey, that's a perfect fourth minus a perfect fourth. And so one of the things I can do is I can split that up. And I can say that's going to be sine squared x minus cosine squared x and sine squared x plus cosine squared x. Oh, 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 that sounds good. Sine squared plus cosine squared x. I know what that is. You should know what that is, too sine squared plus cosine squared, that's a Pythagorean identity, that's the granddaddy, all right, and that's going to be 1. And so if I make that 1, what I have now on the left is sine squared x minus cosine squared x over sine squared x cosine squared x. And that's exactly what I have on the right. So I've actually done number seven for you. You just got to get to that point. So I hope this helps. I know it was a little um, long in terms of different things, but there's six or seven different methods that we can put in our toolbox. And I'm hoping that these help you out in solving your trick proofs. So good luck, and we'll see you Friday.